guys! How's it going? Hope you're having an awesome week so far. So I was hoping to film something for you guys last week, but it was my monthly cycle and the whole week I was feeling so heavy and so unmotivated and just like I couldn't do anything beyond the bare minimum. So I just got it this morning and I feel like a totally different person. Back to my normal self, very much a lot lighter and a lot happier and a lot, mm, let's say a lot easier to access my innate gratitude and appreciation for what I have and the people around me and all that. So anyway, I wanted to use this little uh, experience of mine to highlight exactly what it feels like to be a woman and how you, if you're a guy and you're listening to this, how you can understand us better. Because if you're in a heterosexual re relationship, or you have a good friend who's a female, I mean, you know, sometimes we really do seem like we're from a totally different planet, maybe even from a different galaxy or another universe entirely because the way we operate is very, let's say, very unexpected for a lot of guys out there. So I want to take this time to share some of the things that go on in our minds and that, um, you know, come very naturally to us that may be totally foreign to the male species. So one of them is that we are at the whim of our cycle. So every month we have four weeks and each of these weeks has a different set of behaviors and challenges and experiences that make us change and change and change. And we are constantly in flux. So week one, you know, say in a few days, I'm going to be done and I'm going to feel amazing and so good and so happy and so productive and so motivated to go and accomplish things for about a week. And then the second week is when it starts to go downhill and um, things change a little bit. You know, you're still feeling very good, very normal, quite productive, but um, things are changing and then you have ovulation. And then after that, week three, you know, you feel distinctly more tired. You start to feel more grumpy and things become a little bit more irritating. And then when week four approaches, then you can be the biggest B-I-T-C-H on the planet or you can want to withdraw and just sink into your couch and disappear forever. And then finally one day your period comes and then you're like, thank freaking God, thank you so much because I was going to go and jump off my balcony. That's uh, an example scenario of how a month can look for a woman. So, Having this knowledge about us and what our natural physiology causes us to feel like and to act like is so much power for you. Power in the sense that it's knowledge and that empowers you to one, be prepared for our fluxes, for how we might appear differently right? It's not like we have become a different person with different values and different opinions and a totally different mode of operation or anything like that, right? We are the same person, but unfortunately, our hormones have such a different, let's say, cycle to them, so different from men that uh, it may appear very unstable to somebody who is ignorant to it. And trust me, I don't like it. Most women, I am sure, do not like to be this way. But this is just what it is. And so, I mean, if you're facing a relationship with somebody who does appear to be a little bit unstable, maybe she becomes erratic, maybe she becomes more nitpicky, maybe she acts out, maybe she yells at you, 
So it would be good if you want to preserve your relationship with her to first understand that you are really in the best position to make her feel cared for so she can go back to her safe, relaxed, feminine. So what does it mean for a man to show a woman that she is safe and cared for? A lot of affection would be amazing. A lot of physical touching, a lot of caresses, a lot of solid presence from you would be amazing. A lot of hugging. I know it's very hard when you're facing somebody who is making you feel upset yourself because you're like, I didn't deserve any of this. Why are you treating me like this? And that's super understandable. But she doesn't even mean it a lot of the time. Honestly, when I'm in my week three, week four, I hate myself. I dread it. I honestly dread it. And I think, oh my goodness, I'm such a monster. And it's not really anything that you can control. Isn't that the messed up part? Like I cannot actually control my thoughts. I can't control my mood. It just comes onto you like an avalanche. And you're like, well, I gotta just make it through the, through the day. And then somehow, you know, hopefully tomorrow will be better and my hormones will be more balanced and I'm going to feel a lot better because I'll get enough sleep and da 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 da. But honestly, women just have to go through this every month and we do not want to act this way, but it just happens. So if you can be our support and a source of love for us, to make us feel, you know what? Yeah, we're being kind of awful right now, but I'm still being loved and I'm still lovable. And that can come not only with the physical um, shows of love and the affection and the intimacy, but you know, a lot of men out there are very much, they like to express with acts of service, which is another love language. So showing that you love them by being thoughtful in your actions, how you choose to take care of her. So say if she always complains about, say her feet are always cold. Women usually have colder extremities than men. So go and bring her some nice thick socks, maybe some reading socks for her to wear and think, okay, you know what? I'll just heat up some nice hot water for her. Maybe make her a nice tea. Maybe make her a nice herbal tea so it can calm down her nervous system and help her down-regulate all that stress and cortisol that her body is currently dealing with. So not only are you taking care of her literally emotionally because you're making her feel seen and not hated and not rejected or any of those things because if you're there and you have chosen to be with her and you are not leaving then show her you are not leaving make her feel that you know what i understand you i understand that this is not who you actually are and together let's find a way to make the situation better so you have shown her emotionally that she's cared for. And then through little acts like that, you can show her physiologically that it's okay to relax. That would be super helpful. And number three would be to lend her a listening ear. Because honestly, women, I mean, a lot of the time, we don't really have a lot of people to talk to. And... Maybe we have our friends, but friends may not always be available to us, right? Friends may have their own families, they have their own kids, they have their own relationships, they have crazy jobs nowadays, right? Like just because women are sometimes a little bit more blessed with having bigger social groups doesn't always mean that these social groups are available to us when we need them. So learning how to be a good listener would be so useful for you, not only in your relationship with her, but also in your relationship with your mother and your father and your siblings and your friends 
anybody, everybody can benefit from you becoming a better listener. Listening is such a lost art nowadays, right? People just, one, are either distracted with their phones, with their own crazy thoughts in their heads, right? We're so bogged down by so many stresses throughout the day, notifications, people saying this and that. If you're online at all in any meaningful way, then you always have some kind of conflict going on. Very rarely do we get to just go through life with a clear head and a still mind. So I guess before you can become a good listener is to first become self-aware enough to manage your own inner world so that you can control your thoughts and reduce the clutter and all the chaos that can start whirling around inside of our heads. So you'll have to cleanse all that out and reduce that and calm all that down inside of yourself so that when you go to become an open presence for your partner or whoever else, you present them with a non-judgmental, loving space for them to start pouring themselves out into. And then that way, you become somebody who is actually genuinely so precious to her. Because, I mean, wouldn't we all love to have somebody who just is there for us, able to listen to us without one, interjecting, two, judging us for something, three, criticizing us for why we didn't do this or do that, or four, trying to be the white knight in shining armor. If we're not looking for a knight, we're looking for just a person to listen but they jump to the rescue and they say, well, what about this? I mean, why don't you consider doing it this way? Or um, you can maybe do this instead. Like, why do you even have to stay at that job? And trust me, I have a very strong masculine inside of me, in case you can tell. So my mind is always usually very solutions focused and I like to offer solutions and offer, you know, different points of view. However, learning how to discern between whether the situation calls for you to offer a solution or it calls for you to just stay peaceful and loving and caring and supporting of this person is such an important skill. And learning how to provide those two when they are needed at the right times is like a gift you can give that is like no other. So I hope these tips help you a little bit in navigating through your relationship with any woman in your life. I wanna be super honest with you guys because I don't think women are easy and we are one of the biggest challenges for men, if not the biggest challenge for men. We are volatile, unpredictable, moody, we can create stories in our heads, we can store away little bits of information that you have zero knowledge of or awareness of and store it uh, to use for retaliation later on. And that is literally just stuff we do instinctively. We don't try to be mean and we don't try to throw you under the bus or push you into a corner, but the way we're wired is that we need to make sure the person we're choosing as our partner is worthy and has the skills and the, and the capability of being the person we're choosing. And so all these little things are tests to see how you handle it. And so unless you want to be somebody who just doesn't ever want to be in a meaningful relationship with a woman or to connect with a woman deeply or to build a family or a future or anything with any woman, then you can disregard everything I'm saying. But I'm telling you as a woman who is trying to use her awareness to, um, let's say, illuminate some of the things that, ex that we experience as women, 
I think it would be helpful for you to know this about us. Use this however you want. I wish you luck on your relationship journey. And if you have any thoughts about that, drop them below and good luck with everything. I will see you in the next one. Have an awesome day. Go and kill it.